Hello and welcome to the Hoof GP. Today we're looking at cows with sand cracks that have never been near sand in their lives. I'm talking about why I'm letting so many of these beef cows straight through the crush without even trimming them and you can help me out by subscribing below. Cheers guys, roll the intro. So hello, you're joining us on our way to a little farm called White Hills. This is a farm where I've known the farmer literally all of my life, a guy called Martin, who's an awesome chap, which kind of pains me to say it because he's probably watching this. I'm not exactly sure what's going to be happening today because he asked me to trim every cow on his farm and I said no because it's most likely that a lot of his cows do not need trimmed in any way and we could actually do a little bit of harm if we did trim them. He has beef cows. Normally you see us trimming black and white ones or Holsteins, which are dairy cattle. But today, it's beef cows. So it's gonna be a bit of a rodeo. This is Wigtown, Scotland's national book town, and it's where I'm setting off on my journey this morning. Martin's farm is only a short six or seven mile drive. As you can see, the heavens are low this morning, the rain is chucking it down, and there are clouds galore. We are headed just south to the village of Sorby, where my wife Ashley actually grew up. And just beyond that lies White Hills Farm, our destination for today, and where hopefully there are plenty of eager beaver cows waiting for us to arrive. I know White Hills Farm well now, so I'm able to pull up and pull into position without having to assess the lie of the land. So we're here and we're nearly set up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way through the lame cows to begin with that Martin knows are definitely lame and have got small problems. Get them fixed and then move on to the ones that have lesser problems that may become real ones in the future. Come on. Beef cows, or sucklers as sometimes we refer to them, are known for being a little bit wilder. But as you can see, Martin's cows are calmer than most. So we're easily able to get them down the race, into the crush, and crack on with the job. It's funny, you know, farms are dirty, windy, cold, smelly places. But as soon as I get a foot in front of me and a grinder in my hand, it's all I'm thinking about. Everything else just blurs into the background. Most of the cow's feet that we're trimming today are just like this one, just in need of a little TLC to make sure that nothing untoward starts to happen to them. However, there is a theme starting to emerge and we're just about to talk about that. This cow has what's known as a sand crack or a vertical fissure. Can you spot where it is? That's right, there's a crack running right up the front or dorsal wall of this cow's outer claw. These cracks by themselves can cause discomfort and a little bit of pain. However, if they're left untreated, they can become a serious issue for the cow. So we've just trimmed about 10 so far and we found a few problems. Nothing absolutely major. It's definitely a job well done and I'm glad that we're inside, not outside. It's horrendous. 
Although Martin sheds a little on the short side. The crush actually usually goes a lot higher than it does today. So I'm down on my knees trimming the front feet because we can actually adapt the height that it goes to using this little screw on the apple. This part here goes up, hits this stopper and stops the height. It does mean I might have a bad back at the end of the day though. Hey ho! No matter what kind of cow we're trimming, in what situation, we always follow a preset routine. And these cows are no different whatsoever. Our focus is always on two main points, making sure that the two digits are completely balanced and the hoof angle is optimum. 55 degrees is the perfect angle for a cow's foot to strike the ground properly. Here's another cow with a sand crack. Whenever we attend any farm at all, we're always looking for trends so that we can spot issues that the farmer could work on to try to make his cows as comfortable as possible. And that way farmers can limit lameness, increase their productivity and make sure their cows are as happy as possible. You can clearly see this crack runs from the tip of the toe all the way up to the coronet, the hairline or the part that forms the horn. And there lies the problem. Every part of horn that is formed with that crack there will be cracked and continue to crack. When we trim a cow who has a sand crack, the most important part to focus on is the very beginning of that crack. If there's a crack there, the horn will continue to follow that track and that path caused by the crack. So you need to round out the very initial point of the crack if you ever want the newly formed horn to grow out perfectly. Even although it's not always possible to manage this, we do need to at least try. As you can see here, Martin's herd of cows are in fantastic condition and we're only looking at a very small percentage of the total amount of cows he actually has. Craig is doing his job fantastically, thank you Craig. Although the hairdresser cut doesn't quite suit me. Ah, let's be honest, it does. This is very, very like the farm where I grew up on. Well, the land's a lot better actually, but the farm's quite similar. And the fact that they have beef and sheep here, it's quite a harsh life actually. That's why a lot of farmers, a lot of people who work on farms like this in the southwest of Scotland, probably all throughout Scotland actually, have a really strong sense of humour that's pretty dry because they put up with a lot in their lives, so you need a sense of humour. I know I can laugh at myself. I'll probably laugh at Craig more than I laugh at myself though, to be fair. What was that? Nothing mate. So Martin's running through all of the cows he's got and he's picking out anything that has any overgrowth at all, anything that is kind of favouring or disfavouring one leg and we're trimming everything and probably more than is actually needed just to make sure that his cows are in the best condition possible. Not just because it's his livelihood but because he knows it's his duty to look after these cows and they look after him in return. This coffee's good. By the way, who is selling gingerbread lattes on eBay for 500 pounds? 500, that's like $700. Because I ain't buying them. Well, they might, but I don't want to. So our house is coming on fantastically well. We're hoping to move in within the next two weeks. Whether that'll happen or not is a different question, but we are hoping to. And you guys can go and check it out because I'm going to do an update on GP's everything this weekend. So. Head over to my other channel, GP's Everything. Check them out. Let's get some work done.
with this camera done, we have done about 30 cows so far. And we have about 20 more to do. But now, we need another coffee. One last. One last. Winters here in Scotland are um, wet, to say the least. Did you get the proud to be a hoof trimmer cup? Did I get a proud to be a hoof trimmer cup? Yep. Did I? Oh, is that what that little one is? Aye. Right. Didn't even realise that. Cow care, thank you. Look at this. This is Craig's favourite top. Ah! It's proud not. to be a hoof trimmer. Oh, look at this. All that goodness. So the cows here are beef cows, which are reared predominantly for the meat industry, obviously. Which is why they maybe look healthier to some people who are watching this and don't realise that dairy cows put all of their energy into producing milk. These guys put all of their energy into producing muscle mass, which is why they look like they're really sort of in good form. Dairy cows look a lot leaner because they're burning so many calories producing milk. These are mostly Simmental and Hereford crosses, which are two different types of cattle crossbred with either dairy cattle or could be with a different type of beef cow. So none of these are actually purebred, I don't think. Martin knows his cows well, and it's a testament to him that these cows are really nice and calm because a lot of beef cattle are known for being pretty wild, but we can work with these really easily, which is good because they're not exactly easy to push around. So the way we're working today is Craig has got the day off from moving the cows and he is down there trimming with me while Martin is selecting them, bringing them up this race here, and he's already worked out which tag numbers are to be trimmed and which ones are to be let straight on. In other words, not trimmed. So he works with a management system here, so they have their own identification number, but then they have a management tag, which is a short number and a letter in Martin's case. And he's noting them down outside, seeing how they're walking, seeing if there's any overgrowth, and then he knows which ones to give us to trim, and he lets the rest straight on. It's kind of like money just walking straight out of the crush. It's dark in here for a reason. Reason. There are sides on the race and that's so that the cows can't see sideways and it keeps them moving forward. Light at the end of the tunnel so to speak and it does work fantastically well. You never need to push your cows up this part of the race but as soon as they enter this part of the race because it's more open and they're aware of their surroundings they stop much more quickly. It's also why this crush has these louvered doors. Look the cows can't see out the side but if they could look backwards which they can't they can see. So we can see in here but they can't see here which is good because it means the cows load into the apple and steel much more easily than any other shoe i've ever used so this is actually the way i used to trim when i had my old whopper i used to spread my legs so that i could lower my center of gravity and not have to bend my back quite as much. It really does save my back from getting really sore, but I definitely don't want to do it every day. This cow has a slight corkscrew claw, which basically means the bone inside the foot is beginning to rotate, and therefore it's deforming the horn around it. You'll notice I don't actually trim the base of the claw completely flat, I trim it at the same angle as the bone within, and that is to try to help rotate the bone back to where it should be. On the back right hand foot you can notice this even more. Whilst I trim the cow's back two feet, Craig begins work on the front two feet. And Craig by the way is a fantastic hoof trimmer. Craig's not used to sand cracks, so he's getting the foot pretty close to where it needs to be and then if he's not 100% sure, but that's fine, he leaves it up so that I can check it. Here is a much more extreme example of a corkscrew claw. As you can see, the outer wall horn is actually on the base of the foot now because it has grown right around the pedal bone and ended up there. So it's our job to try to correct the balance between these two claws and try to get it to rotate back at least a little bit. Although obviously in a case like this, we're never going to truly re-rotate it back to where it should be.
The overgrowth and rotation of this outer claw has caused hemorrhaging in this cow's toe, trimming it back so that both of the digits are equally balanced and trimming that outer digit at a slight angle so that the inner bone is at more of a perpendicular angle to the floor should really, really help this cow's comfort levels and prevent any further damage happening. And that is us done for the day. 44 cows done, and his main problem was sand cracks. Sand, my face is filthy, isn't it? Let's do something about that. That's better. Much cleaner. As I was saying, Martin's cows suffer predominantly from sand cracks, and that's basically when the fields are muddy and wet and the cows get excessively dry hoof horn. So why would they get that from muddy fields? Surely it would be the opposite. Well, it's actually the act of the mud going onto the feet and then drying off. When it dries off, it sucks all of the moisture out of the hoof horn and it cracks it, just like a riverbed cracks when it dries up. And that, my amazing friends from all around the world, is us finished for the day. Now all that's left to do is sit back, relax, and watch Craig clean the crush. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.